I'm ready when you guys are. Cool. We will kick things off with Joe Masada with the Oklahoman. Hey, Mark, what was it like having Al Horford out there with you guys today for the first time? It was great. You know, it was great seeing him out there. Uh, you know, these guys have just gone a, a pretty good stretch without any sort of five on five or build up, and he's been in that category. So I think it was good for him to get out there with the guys. Um, you know, just such a good teammate, such an easy guy to play with. Um, you know, you definitely felt him in the gym today. Next, we have Brady Trantham with the franchise. Coach, Al spoke a lot about uh, the opportunity that he has with this team, not necessarily just individually, but just collectively with the group. He spoke highly of the young guys. Have you already seen him really take that mentorship role to heart uh, just in the brief time you've been together with him on the team? Yeah, I mean, it's only obviously been a, a day, but um, yeah, I mean, he's just, he's such an easy guy, such an easy guy to play with. And it will it remains to be seen how that's going to flower uh, and, you know, how vocal he'll be and things like that. I think it's important for guys like Al to find that on their own and, and, you know, for our coaching staff to give him the space to do that. But you can just tell with how he plays the game and, and how encouraging he is. He's just going to have a very positive energy, which, you know, for a lot of players that are trying to establish themselves in the NBA, when you've got a teammate like that that's as accomplished as Al is uh, or George Hill or Muscala uh, that's as encouraging as those guys are, it can give uh, players that maybe don't have the same body of work a lot of confidence. And, you know, I thought that happened today on the court with Al. Next, we have Paris Lawson with OKCThunder.com. Hey, Coach, switching gears just a little bit, um, I wanted to ask you about yesterday and, and Hami specifically. Um, he had a double-double and also grabbed four offensive rebounds. I just wanted to get from your perspective what you thought of his performance yesterday and what he's been able to do kind of throughout training camp so far. Yeah, I wasn't overly surprised by how he played because I think, you know, he's had some really good momentum uh, really since the hiatus, you know, and, and when he came back into camp in Orlando and into those games, the seeding games uh, down there in the bubble, uh, and then into training camp, you know, this is kind of who he's been. He's played hard. He plays well. He's kind of always around the ball. He's always around the play. You know, he just, the next step for him is, um, you know, just tightening the screws a little bit on both ends of the floor with spacing and, and defensive fundamentals. But, you know, the effort and the energy and his ability to impact the game, that's at this point, that really isn't in question. Go back to Joe Masato with the Oklahoman. Yeah, Mark, with Billy back in town this week for a couple of preseason games, I was wondering if you could take us back a little bit to your first opportunity in, in Florida and how that sort of started in the relationship that you guys developed down there. And um, I know there's a lot of parts to this, but maybe some, some of your roles, like what, what you did um, with Billy and what he asked of you there. Well, I, I had coached um, for three years at Holy Cross, and then I, I wanted to go back to grad school. Um, and so I looked at different options, and I knew a common friend uh, to Billy, but I never met, you know, Billy till I got down to Gainesville. I got into grad school and just kind of went down there in my role with the program. I was a GA my first few years, and when I graduated with a master's, uh, you know, Billy and, and Jeremy Foley, the AD there, were kind enough to create a position for me so that I can stay on. But, um, you know, that, those are my roles. But, you know, I've said before, you know, I would never be in this career position had it not been for uh, my time in Florida and the opportunities that not only he gave me, but, you know, the staffs down there were incredible. The players that I get to work with were incredible. Uh, and I met my wife, Ashley, in grad school, you know, so driving down to Florida um, and getting my master's degree was, you know, a great decision for me at that point in my life. It changed my life in a lot of ways. Well, one sort of related follow-up with um, Mo Cheeks, obviously joining his staff in Chicago. I just, what was that experience like? You working alongside Mo for for a year on staff and sort of picking his brain a little bit. Hall of Fame person, you know, first and foremost, and um, you know, he's got the the character and the temperament. Uh, for an NBA season, for an 82 game season, because he's the type of person that you're excited to see. And he's always bringing positive energy to every room that he's in. And there can always, 
you know, be a reason in an NBA season to be down. It can be a grind. You know, you go through a lot of ups and downs and he's the same guy every day and a positive guy every day. And for me personally, it was my first year in the NBA last year. Um, and, and he's a guy that for, you know, a younger assistant coach or for a video person or for a young player, he takes the weight of his status and he throws it behind other people and he gives you a lot of confidence. And uh, I'm indebted to him. I, I gained a lot of experience from him. Uh, and I thought he really put me in a position of strength with the players in particular last year. So uh, it's going to be exciting to see those guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Go back to Brady Trantham with the franchise. Hey, Coach, of the uh, seven players that you didn't uh, or that didn't play uh, Saturday night in San Antonio, were any of them able to get back onto the floor in any capacity today? Yes, uh, many of them. Um, we had many of those guys in, and we'll have many of them against Chicago on uh, on Wednesday. We're expecting most of them, in fact. Back to Joe Masato. You mentioned, I think, pregame or sometime last week, some bumps and bruises with certain guys. Are are you generally healthy or dealing, or are you dealing with any long term stuff with those guys? Nothing long term. I mean, the stuff that we're dealing with is is return to play stuff. Um, everybody that's that's dealing with something that's a bump or a bruise was on the court in some capacity today, even if it was just an individual workout. So everybody's kind of on the, the upswing. And, you know, we had more players in practice today uh, than we have all of camp. So we're, we're definitely getting healthy.